Way back in chapter four, we learned about soluble and insoluble solids. And back in chapter five, we explored the enthalpy of dissolving some salts in water. However, we did not go into detail on why two substances will or won't create a solution. In this lesson, we'll break the solution process into three steps and see that each step is affected by intermolecular forces. Finally, we'll see why like dissolves like. That is why polar solvents dissolve polar solutes and nonpolar solvents dissolve nonpolar solutes. Back in week five, we explored the enthalpy of dissolution in the first kitchen chemistry lab. We had two salts that were both readily soluble in water, but calcium chloride caused an increase in temperature, while potassium chloride caused a decrease in temperature. How can we explain their difference in behavior? The answer is to divide the process of solution formation into three steps. Two are endothermic and one is exothermic. In reality, the three steps of the dissolving process happen simultaneously. However, it's helpful to look at them one at a time. The first step is to break apart the solute particles. The amount of energy needed to break apart the solute particles depends on the strength of the forces holding the particles together, but it is always an endothermic process. The second step is similar to the first. The solvent particles need to be separated from each other. This will allow them to make room for the solute in the solution. This will also mean breaking some solvent-solvent IMFs to make room for the solvent particles. Breaking apart attractions is always endothermic. Now that we have broken the solute-solute attractions and also made room in the solution, the third and final step is to mix the two substances together. This process is exothermic because new attractions are formed between the solute and solvent particles. The enthalpy of this step is directly related to the strength of the IMFs created between solute and solvent. When the solute and solvent share many strong IMFs, this step is very exothermic. When the solute and solvent do not have many strong IMFs, the enthalpy of this step is very low. We know from Hess's law that the overall enthalpy is equal to the sum of the enthalpies of each step. So for the process of dissolving, the overall enthalpy is equal to the sum of the three steps shown here. The next slide will show a visualization of this concept. Since the first two steps of the solution process are endothermic and the third step is exothermic, the magnitude of the enthalpies of these steps determines whether the overall process is exothermic or endothermic. If the exothermic enthalpy of mixing is larger than the two endothermic steps, then the overall solution process is exothermic, as shown on this energy level diagram. In other words, the amount of energy we get out from mixing the two substances together is greater than the amount of energy we had to put in to break apart the solute-solute and solvent-solvent interactions. If the enthalpy of mixing is smaller than the two endothermic steps, then the overall process is endothermic, as shown in this image. The process of mixing doesn't give back enough energy to pay for the two endothermic steps. The solution process is thus more energetically favorable if the enthalpy of mixing is large in magnitude. Having lots of strong IMFs between the solute and the solvent increases the size of the enthalpy of mixing. Polar solvents, like water, can engage in the strongest IMFs, dipole-dipole, hydrogen bonding, and ion-dipole forces. They are good at dissolving things which also exhibit these strong IMFs. On the other hand, nonpolar solvents like oils only exhibit the weakest IMF, dispersion forces. These dispersion forces are not strong enough to break apart the strong IMFs in a polar solute. Thus, 
Oils cannot dissolve polar molecules like sugar or ionic compounds like salt. Nonpolar things can only dissolve other nonpolar things. This is summarized by the aphorism, like dissolves like. Nonpolar solvents like paint thinner cannot break apart polar IMFs, but they are great at dissolving other nonpolar things like oil-based paints because both compounds have similarly weak IMFs. A polar solvent like water is great at dissolving polar compounds. However, water will not dissolve nonpolar compounds because water would rather keep its strong water-water interactions than form weak IMFs between the water and the nonpolar substance.